明けましておめでとうございます。Happy New Year, everybody! My name is Yuko Eguchi Wright. My tea name is Eguchi Soyu. Nice, nice to meet you all. I've been teaching Japanese culture and music at the University of Pittsburgh, and I've been also teaching Japanese tea ceremony at my home in Pittsburgh. Today, I would like to talk to you about a little of a Japanese history. And also, I want to show you how to make a really good matcha at your home. <laughs> so, tea ceremony is not really cold as tea ceremony in Japan. It's actually called chado. Cha means tea, do means the way. So, the way of tea is what it's called. Tea actually came from China around maybe 5th or 6th century or so, but it did not stick around in Japan、And、until、uh, late 12th century. There is a Zen monk, Eisai. He went to China to study the Zen Buddhism. And there he learned the Zen Buddhism, but at the same time, he, he saw some. Tea drinking culture at the Zen temple. So he brought back tea utensils, tea scrolls, and especially importantly, the tea seeds, the plant seeds itself from China. And he presented the then shogun, is the military general, the top of Japan at the time, Ashikaga shogun. He presented this tea along with the tea culture、uh, that he brought back from Zen Temple in China. And he actually introduced tea as a health food, a drink that you make you、uh, energize, basically. It's healthy, it has lots of vitamins, and makes you very energetic. So it's a powerful,、uh, kind of like a medicine.、Uh, that's how it was first introduced. And later on, people started to pick up and you know, start drinking this tea, but the tea itself was still、uh, brought over from China, so it was a very expensive import. And, but then,、uh, around 14th and 15th, 15th centuries,、uh, the tea、uh, started to be planted in Japan and started to grow, and then they, are, they started to make more tea powder in Japan itself, too. And then during this time, tea became a kind of luxury culture for very、uh, high status and also intellectuals.、Uh, they wanted to drink tea, but also they used tea as a gambling thing. Well, I don't know if you've heard、uh, tea gambling before, but be- basically, you are presented a couple of bowls of teas and you drink it, you taste it. And then you guess which tea is coming from which region of Japan or maybe from China. And then you start betting money on it. And they, that became very monetized, capitalized, and it's not so nice culture. And so actually, the government stepped in to ban this culture. And then there's one person, particularly,、uh, who resented this monetized tea culture. His name is Sen no Rikyu. Sen no Rikyu. He served for two、uh, military generals then. One is the Oda Nobunaga, and then second one is the Toyotomi Hideyoshi. Both of them are considered、uh, two of the three important unifier of Japan from、uh, mid 16th century. So, Sen no Rikyu, who resented this monetized gambling culture, he thought, well, look, tea came, this tea culture came along with Zen Buddhism. So, we should put those Zen teachings and then tea culture connected together. And then he basically formalized this tea making procedure. And also try to find beauty into nature and simplicity and imperfection and all these aesthetics 
are kind of tied to the Zen thinking, but as well as uh, it's it's basically uh, known as wabi sabi, the aesthetics that you've maybe heard of before. It's not wasabi. <laughs> wasabi is for the sushi, right? It's wabi sabi. So before we go too much into details, I can you know offer you the history and philosophy of tea ceremony, uh, maybe at the later uh, events some of the time. But today I want to show you how to exactly make a really good taste tea here. So I have utensils here. Uh, tea bowl, tea scoop, and tea whisk. So this is a tea bowl, and this is a tea whisk. It's made by, made by bamboo. And then also there's a tea scoop, the spoon, made by bamboo too. So I picked this black tea bowl so that I thought you'd be able to see the tea very well. Um, so I'm gonna bring this here in front of it. And also this is the tea container. It's lacquered and it has gold uh, design on it. And I don't know if you can see well, but this is the Japanese instrument called biwa. It's like kind of like a banjo, yes. And so this is kind of has a music theme on it. Uh, this was a gift from my mother uh, when I received my PhD in ethnomusicology. So, to make tea, you need a uh, hot boiling water. So I have it ready over here. So let me get ready for it. So this is a hukusa, the red silk cloth. I use this to purify utensils. So let me see, I can, I'm not quite <laughs> following the regular procedure because I wanted to basically show you how to make uh, tea here. So the setting is not quite as a regular way of a tea here but I want you to uh, see how it's done here. Okay, so. To make a good tea, you will need one and a half scoop of tea, but inside of tea container, you can see the tea is kind of like this. So if you buy some matcha tea, you need to sift it and so that the tea powder contains uh, more air and makes it easier to absorb the water. So I'm gonna put one and a half scoop of tea, which is about half teaspoon of tea inside of the tea bowl. And then we will put about half of this ladle, meaning that it's about one third cup uh, full of boiling water. Sorry. <laughs> so once you put in, then put the whisk in and then start whisking, but try to make straight lines like this. At the end, make a circle. And then here is the tea. A 
as you can see inside, the T has a foam at the top. And then the good taste tea has a very even, very, very small foam bubbles on it. So that's the good tasting tea. So the main thing is that the tea powder and the water mix together well. And so don't worry about whisking it too hard because you might break the little tip of bamboo whisk. So do it gently, but uh, make sure uh, that the tea powder and the water uh, mix together so that the lumps will not be there. Okay, and now I would like to show you how to drink the tea. So when you are ser served tea, usually this tea design should be looking at you directly if you are a guest. And first, you bring the tea bowl in front of you, put it down on the floor, and then uh, tell the host, whoever made, made the tea, Otemae chodai itashimasu, meaning I humbly receive your tea. And then pick it up and then show your appreciation by slightly lift up the tea bowl and then turn clockwise twice, one, two to basically avoid this beautiful design uh, not your facing your front because touching your lips onto the design is considered not so polite. And so you turn it clockwise twice and then have as many sips as you like. So at the end, I made that slurping sound. That's a very important sound, actually, to basically give the cue to the host that you're finished with this tea, but at the same time, it's showing that you thoroughly enjoyed this tea with just with that one sound. So you wipe the edge of the tea bowl with your fingers and wipe your finger with this tea papers called kaishi and then turn counterclockwise this time big ones one two so that this design will look to the host this time and then bring the tea ball back to the host place so this is how you make the yummy tea, matcha tea at your home. I hope it was helpful for you. Uh, if you would like to learn more about Japanese tea ceremony, uh, please go to my website, yukoeguchi.com, Y-U-K-O-E-G-U-C-H-I.com. So, Hopefully, we'll see you all again, and next time I would like to show you exactly how this procedure is done, along with talking more about history and the philosophy behind this tea ceremony. Okay? Alright, thank you so much! Have a wonderful new year! <laughs>